Hello, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm your host, Melanie Jones, and I'm so privileged to have my good friend, Carol Gent, with us today. Carol is a hygienist. She works in our clinical affairs department at Ultradent, and she has been here for how long? 22 years. 22 years. Yes, longer than I've been married. Hey, me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've known each other for a really long time. She knew me when I was young and obnoxious, and now I'm just obnoxious but not young. And so we're here we are, still <laughs> buddies after all this time. That's true. But Carol is a hygienist, and she works here full time, but she also works at Donated Dental, providing um, hygiene for underserved populations. Maybe you can talk about that oh, for a second. Yeah. It's a great organization here in Salt Lake City. We're really fortunate to have them here. They take care of our no-income, low-income um, immigrants, retirees. It's amazing the people that take advantage of those services. And they are treated just with the same respect and, and good care that they would get anywhere. And um, just, it, it's really a, a nice, nice service. It's uh, one that um, a lot of other groups have tried to copy or have copied and used them as the example and, uh, m you know, been able to build their, their uh, clinics, their free clinics uh, to match that. So Donated Dental Services is really quite, quite a good, it, you we're very fortunate to just have it here. Mm -hmm. And Carol, if you can't tell already, has the biggest heart. She also does a ton of humanitarian work overseas. I know I've seen lots of pictures it. from China. Have you been to other places besides China? China and Mexico. China Those and are Mexico. The, the two areas that um, I've just fallen in love with. And the people that I work with are just fabulous, fabulous people. They, they usually go on a, some sort of humanitarian mission uh, once a year. And there's so many people I know that would like to. And if there's anyone that's interested in a humanitarian a mission of some kind, um, email me. You know, let me know. I can you know, hook you up with someone that might be going or a couple trips that are out there with organizations I'm aware of. And speaking of that, Ultradent has a great humanitarian program. Mm -hmm. So if you are planning on a humanitarian trip, um, please contact us because we love to supply you with the products that you need to make your trip successful. And um, Dr. Fisher is very generous about very the supplies generous. that he donates Very for generous. humanitarian efforts. So please reach out to us. Um, we have Francesco Gualtieri has joined us. Hello in Italy and also Rafiq Hakim who is in Canada. Hello. Um, we're happy to have you with us. So today Carol is going to be talking about fluoride varnish and she is a very appropriate person to talk about this because not only is she a hygienist but she has been at Ultradent through all of our iterations of fluoride varnish, works in our clinical affairs department and has um, shaped the product that we <laughs> have now. So will you tell our audience the history of our iterations of fluoride varnish mm. and what we've learned through Absolutely. the R&D process? Absolutely. You know, we could see fluoride varnish becoming a bigger and bigger thing here in the United States. It was already quite popular in uh, Asia and Europe and they were being used you know, quite a bit over there. And so we could, we could see it was something we could see by the, the information, the studies that they had, that it was, it was really something that was going to become a big part of, of fluoride treatment here in the United States, and, and a very good one at that. So Dr. Fisher gave me the task of calling a lot of the pediatric uh, dental departments at various universities uh, throughout the United States and speaking with some of our key opinion leaders that are uh, pediatric dentists, et cetera, and talking to them just about, you know, what's going on with fluoride varnish? What's, what's good about it? What's bad about it? You know, what does it need? How can we improve the product? You know, give us some kind of guidelines. And so it was really fun interviewing these doctors. And so some of the things they came up with were, it was more or less our framework where we started from. And so there's a sli I've got a slide here, and this slide shows you uh, kind of what I came up with. The doctors talked about color. It was a problem early, early on. Fluoride varnish was great. It was doing everything what everyone wanted, but it was just a hideous yellow color that patients didn't really appreciate. So they said, if you can improve that, that's big in itself. 
Some of the other problems were texture, felt like corduroy on the teeth, um, aesthetics. Uh, it's been compared to looking like somebody just had a Wonder Bread sandwich with spread with mustard. Was it uh, really that bad? You know what? It kind of was. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. I had it put on my teeth once, got out to the car, the little fingernail came out, and guess what? Started scraping. Mm -hmm. Did not want to be seen with that. It was kind of crazy. That's pretty gross. But uh, that was important. But one thing that was really interesting, and this was, again, early on, was when they talked about the delivery system. And what we learned, and you can see from on my slide here, the second picture there shows a unit dose that had been opened. And if you look real carefully, you can see how the fluoride has separated from the varnish. And so what we learned is a lot of people really weren't giving this a good mix before applying it to the teeth. And that separation, sometimes the, the patient was getting a, a varnish treatment and not a fluoride treatment at all, which was, was kind of interesting. And so they said there's got to be a way that, uh, you know, it's more homogenous, that it, it's, it's mixed more, that it becomes a, a, a complete treatment, let's say. Because so you that were was saying the big some of the of fluoride was like stuck to the foil it, peel off lid, right? Yes, it was. In fact, it was funny when I was peeling off all these lids, I started looking at it one day, ran it down and had the, the guys in the lab assay it and said, you know, uh, is this crystallized varnish? And they looked at it and played with it and did whatever they do down there. Came back and said, no, that's the fluoride. And I thought, oh, okay, that's where half of my fluoride was then. What fun so, toys you have that oh, you can just like run to R&D and say, test this for me. It's really fun. <laughs> I can, an SEM, whatever. <laughs> it's awesome. So, but, and then I learned, okay, how important it was when you do open those foil packets, you need to get in there with that brush and get that fluoride back into the, into the varnish and give it a really good mix. So we realized that was a problem, and we'll get to how we, how we uh, remedied that in just a second. And then, of course, there's always flavorings, dyes, gluten, things like this that we have, uh, have to always be aware of because there are so many allergies and sensitivities right now. And then, of course, the fluoride release and fluoride uptake. And I'll be showing you a slide in just a minute that, that really speaks to this quite a bit. So as, um, as we developed our product, our first product that we came up with was one that, were, well, actually, it was kissing syringes, kind of like our boost syringes, where we put the, make the product go back and forth. And it would mix in between two syringes. We'd put a tip in and take it to the mouth. Well, you can only imagine. <laughs> That's an expensive proposition for the, us and for the doctor. Right. So we knew we had to improve on that. We knew there had to be improvements made. And so as we went along, we made improvements to our tips, to our mixing, to the actual varnish itself, made it so it wasn't so yellow. That was our second. And then now we have Enamelast. And this is just the best product. I love this product. And I've used a lot of products, a lot of our competitors as well, both at, uh, in the clinic where I work, as well as here at Ultradent. And what we found and what we ended up with was a product that um, has a great color. It's very natural color. It's, it's, it's very transparent. It doesn't, it doesn't really have a, a white look to it uh, when you first put it on. Uh, it's a smooth texture. It, it just has a really nice appearance. Patients are so much more accepting of this. Our delivery system, we did go from our kissing syringes to uh, Four, uh, 0.4 unit dose, uh, which is quite common, and that's what people are used to. So uh, we did uh, we we did introduce that, and we were able to make the resin in such a way that we no longer had to have the kissing syringes. We were able to have just one syringe delivery, and that's in a 1.2 uh, mil syringe. And so that's really that's still popular with a lot of groups, and I'll be showing you that later. And then of course. Four flavors. We have to have our Walter Berry orange. What mm -hmm. else do we have? Mint. Mint. Bubblegum. Bubblegum. Exactly. Sometimes you feel like you're working for Baskin Robbins <laughs> instead of Dr. So and so. And why do the kids always pick bubblegum ice cream? Every time I take my kids there, it's bubblegum ice cream. And then it's a total disaster. That's because they afterwards. don't have Walter Berry. That's, that's right. That's, that's probably true. true. But then, probably the most important thing has been our fluoride release and our fluoride uptake. And this is really the bottom line when it comes to fluoride varnishes. Uh, we have to make sure that we have a varnish that is made in such a way that it will release when it's up against the tooth 
into the enamel. Uh, enamel goes through a re demineralization, remineralization constantly. It's, it's a very dynamic process going on in the mouth. So when it's up against the tooth, it has to be able to release into the tooth. The uptake also has to be good. And these are, these are probably the main things. And I, I am amazed at the studies that our lab has done, our formulations department, as well as our scientists. And they have looked at this competitor, 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 one against the other. And they have made this a product that truly, truly is unsurpassed as far as fluoride uptake and fluoride uh, release goes. Let me give you just, um, this is kind of an interesting video that I'm going to show you in just a second here. But we had started hearing from our salespeople in the field about a, a, a group of other <laughs> competitor salespeople that were going out and telling accounts uh, that, or doctors, that their fluoride would creep. And they kept using this word creep, and we were, we were quite curious about it. We thought, yeah, what is the creep, creep? And so went down to the lab, worked with some of the boys, and um, set up some extracted teeth in plaster. And we put this competitor's varnish on these teeth, and then we put some enamel ass on the teeth, put it in uh, water that was basically, well, it was artificial saliva. We put it at body temperature. We had some movement there and set a clock up just to see what would happen. I truly wanted to see this creeping occur myself. And so we set up a camera just to watch it, thinking it would go on overnight. And so let me share this video with you. It was really quite interesting. Um, I'll tell you that the competitor is on the left and we are on the right. And here we go. You can ignore the clock. We found out it was kind of off kilter. But you can see what's happening on the left-hand side. The product was, yes, creeping, but it was creeping right off the teeth. It was incredible to watch how this stuff would just become very soft, very loosened, and almost bubble up and come off the teeth. And it would really happen no time at all. What's the time lapse on this? Uh, well, it started, it became very soft because I can't go without touching anything. Uh -huh. I grabbed an explorer, got in there, touched the side of the competitor's uh, teeth or the, the competitor's product, and then ours. The competitor's product within five, ten minutes would literally float off the teeth. Wow. Where the enamel last, you had, to, it could come off, but you had to really scrape it off. Mm. But it was really amazing to me. But just in the mouth, as easy as that came off, and yes, it did creep. I've got to give those very creative salespeople credit for, for what they came up with, but it's not what we want with the fluoride varnish. We want the fluoride varnish to stay, stay against the teeth so that the fluoride itself can be taken up into that demineralizer, into the enamel, so we have a, a good uh, fluoroapatite type uh, surface. Mm -hmm. So um, from there, uh, let's see, we just started, you know, selling this product and and people have you know asked one of the biggest question is what does the ADA say about it and I'll show you I've got another slide here and this comes actually from I believe it was night uh, I'm 19 I'm sorry 2006 but it was an insert that was in Jada magazine and I don't believe it's changed. I've gone through and read a few of the uh, position papers that the ADA has on fluoride and fluoride varnishes, and they really haven't changed that much. But uh, three of the things that really kind of stuck out to me were these. Uh, one was that our old, I'm going to say our old-fashioned, our way of giving fluoride treatments in the past was four minutes mm -hmm. into a tray. I remember my first fluoride treatment. And if four minutes with nasty, nasty gel in my oh, mouth, and so I gross. think I was, oh my gosh, I was five <laughs> years old, and threw open my mother's purse on the oh. way home. I know, that's horrible, and I know this is live. Sorry, folks, hope you're not eating lunch. <laughs> but it, was, it just made you sick, and it was so hard when, you know, you have little, little kids, and they're, they're, they have to try not to swallow, and this horrible stuff was in the mouth for four minutes, and that's a, an eternity for a child. So what we um, ended up doing was coming up with a one-minute fluoride. And really, it's not that different than the four-minute fluoride. You were just kind of cutting down the treatment time. 
And actually, ADA found in this, um, according to this study, was that the effectiveness of the one-minute fluoride uh, was not conducive to a full treatment. So if you're out there still using, and I know there's still a few of those products out there, just know that you're not really giving your, your patients a full effective treatment that they need to be getting. A couple of the other things that they bring up here is the um, fluoride varnish. They recommend that um, it's applied every six months to primary, as, uh, primary teeth as well as permanent uh, dentition. Um, in other words, both kids and adults. You know, we're forgetting a lot of times adults, we've got to educate them that they too need fluoride, especially with restorative work. When you have a filling, when you have a crown, you know, you forget that there's a margin there and bacteria to love to find, the exactly. Mm -hmm. Bacteria love to find little spots to be able to hide and do their damage. And then lastly, they do recommend that if uh, if a patient is considered a high, in the high risk population, that they have at least, and some groups are saying more than this, but at least two applications per year. And actually, um, at Donated Dental, we do encourage our patients that are high risk, which a lot of them are, to try and get uh, in for um, two others, in other words, for a year, if at all possible. So, now, there are some recommendations on sensitivity as well. There are. You know, it, it's, it's, some people are, uh, they're interested in sensitivity. One of the nice things about varnish versus some of the other things that uh, we do, you, with a varnish, you're going to, it's going to be a physical barrier as well as a fluoride uh, barrier. The fluoride's not going to work immediate. It's going to, you know, take time once the fluoride is into the tooth or into the area that's sensitive. It's going to have to pull in the minerals from the saliva to be able to, you know, really make that into a real, to, I'm going to say plug, for lack of better terms, that dentinal tubule to really try and take care of that sensitive area. But in the meantime, you have something like a varnish. For example, if you put it on right after you've done a, a root planing uh, treatment, you're going to be able to uh, you know, cover that, that root that can be so sensitive. And so you have a physical barrier, both to the plaque that might you know, land on the teeth or be growing on the teeth, or um, you know, just something to, to keep the, the temperature, the hot, the cold away, whatever's bothering the patient. It so it really insulates is, it exactly. as a physical barrier. Yes, mm -hmm. and here, if, for all of the US people, boy, if you haven't used that uh, 9910 code, it's a per spot application code that ADA gives us for insurance. And you know, they're, they're pretty good about paying it, especially if you do a nice narrative. I'm a believer in narratives when it comes to insurance. So uh, that's really um, a nice way to go. It's, a, it's something your patients really appreciate too. So, Speaking of patients, we have one over Yay. in a chair. Carol's going to do a fluoride varnish application on a patient and give you some tips on how to make this process go mm -hmm. more smoothly and be more efficient. Yeah. Um, and we Happy chose to. an adult today for the sake of camera. <laughs> if you can imagine. Yeah. yeah, and they sit still too. Exactly. And so that's always nice. Exactly. Hopefully so, she won't be a whiner. I don't know. <laughs> Jasmine? I'll go check she her says out. no. She's going to go check her out. And while Carol's walking over there, I've got to say, Walter Berry, I love Chew. Walter Berry. Chew. Walter Chew. Berry is one of Ultradent, well, Ultradent's signature flavor. It was developed by a chemist in our R&D lab. His name is Walter. Um, it started with our topical anesthetic and we're famous for this flavor. And it smells so good. Um, we do have the other flavors that Carol mentioned. We have orange cream and bubble gum and mint, but Walter Berry, this is money right here. Um, I wanna say to hello to a few people who have jumped on. We've got Samantha, Gail, Diane, and Allison, thank you for joining us. I hope that you are enjoying this broadcast. And Carol, if you're ready, we'll switch over to your camera. Okay. All right. First thing I want to touch on um, is the syringe that I mentioned. Um, I can do a demonstration with this, but I, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. These are the syringes. We no longer have the kissing syringes, not necessary, because we've developed a resin that is so nice that it's able to, it doesn't separate out the way the old ones did. 
or very little, if any. Just the action of using the syringe with the plunger will cause the resin to stay pretty homogeneous. So there's a few ways that I've known people to use this or that I use it myself. I am one of those people that I will just use it straight from the syringe. I'll demonstrate that in just a second. But there's a lot of people that they realize, especially if they're doing, uh, let's say, a, a, a two-year-old or even a one-year-old, which you know the AAPD is uh, recommending these days, they don't need to use a whole either unit dose or syringe. So what they do, save money, I guess, they're going to put just a little bit either in the dappin dish, and I'll do it on my glove. And then I will take a brush. Now these brushes, one of the things you have to take full advantage of, don't forget this little neck here. This, a lot of people forget that these bend, and they will really hold the bend, which is nice when you're getting in on the lingual or the occlusal, you know, back in the back, those buckle areas. Use your brush, take it to, the, to your glove, you're right there with your mirror, and you're able to, to uh, apply it to the teeth without having to go back and forth, which is really nice. The other thing is some people will actually just use the brush that if you get, depending which kit you get, you can go directly this way. I, on the other hand, will go right to the mouth with the uh, full syringe and go in and I just get a little bit, a little blob right on the end of the brush and I take it to the mouth and I'll start applying it. And I'll show you application in just a second. Now the, let me get this off. Now the unit dose, these things are pretty much industry-wide. They're really nice. They're pretty standard. The one thing they have done, oh, I'm so glad that everybody's got on this bandwagon. They used to be so hard to open. But now it's just simply opening, pulling it off. Check, remember, if there's any fluoride, any crusty-looking stuff on the foil top, which this does not have. Nice, nice mix there. Now I take the full thing off. Some people will wrap it over. The reason I don't is just just because it gets in my way. Do try and give just a couple of swirls. Just get it on the brush. Just make sure it's all down in the pot, so to speak, where you want it to be. And then I will take it, I will put it between my middle and my forefinger and keep it kind of up against my wrist. That way it's kind of out of the way. And I can also, it's really close when I'm using my mirror, okay? Now, we're going to go over here to our patient, and thank you, Jasmine. And she was a good sport, <laughs> sitting here with these lip retractors, and it's kind of crazy. But, and normally, I would not use lip retractors. But what I do is, um, go ahead and lean this way. I'll use a two-by-two, two, and I'll go to the mouth, and I'll do a quadrant. And I'll just kind of give a little bit of a wipe and use the two-by-two two to hold the lip up. Now, as I crawl over here, when I'm applying the varnish, what I do is, I've got a, not a lot on my brush because I don't want to overdo it. I'm putting just a thin layer. I'm going to swipe down as interproximally as I can on the distal. I'll sweep up in an arch, down the middle, up at the top again, and down the mesial. So basically, it's a, I divide the tooth into thirds and I make sure that all three areas are covered and that I'm doing more or less a sweep across right at the gum line where so often the plaque is going to be accumulating and you can have, we see so much decay there, especially in adults with root berries. Now, this is important uh, for a couple reasons. One is there's something that you might remember from school called clean areas of the teeth. Now, I've got a, in fact, I, I've got a slide, and I think, is that up? The slide's up? Okay. Uh, if you remember from school, when we used to have to use disclosing solution, inevitably there was that flat area of the tooth that was just a little bit cleaner, had a little bit less plaque on it than the areas that were in the embrasures and interproximally and up at the gum line. What does that tell us? That's where one, the plaque like, likes to be. But the other thing, that's the area that's going to stay the cleanest. So if we did this all the way around on, on Jasmine, 
and then she went home, the first areas of the mouth that are going to be wiped clean of the fluoride are going to be those clean surfaces, the ones where we don't see the, uh, the, the plaque in the disclosing solution there. So we try and get the varnish in those areas where we know it's going to stay and the areas of the teeth that are really the most vulnerable. Now one of the things I also do is I will scrub with what's left into the occlusal surfaces. If the patient has sealants, absolutely. I want to make sure those margins right along the sealants, hey, they can decay too. They can gather plaque. They can get, gather bacteria. If it's a patient that has restorations, absolutely. Any area like that, any kind of margin on a restoration, a sealant, whatever, can be problematic and uh, can decay. So I do try and make sure that those are really, really strong areas. So, ready? Ready. I'll come back over then. I was getting lonely over here. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Um, make sure if you have questions for Carol while she's walking over, go ahead and type them in and she will answer live. In the meantime, Carol actually lectures for us all over the world. She <laughs> tags along with Dr. Fisher and she I gives do. the staff program when Dr. Fisher is giving the mm -hmm. doctor program. Yeah. Do you still split into two rooms? We do. Mm -hmm. We do. It's a lot of fun too because um, I've learned so much from him. It, I mean, it, it's crazy. And the staff love getting to know him initially and then coming in and listening to my spiel. Uh, usually, of course, it's the hygienists that come in. But I do try and take a very neutral, uh, I'm very very upfront with people, tell them about our heartaches, for example, with you know fluoride varnish and how we started out and the fact it took, what, nine 10, maybe 11 years to really develop our hydro sealant. Uh, and it's because we want it perfect. And I'm, I'm very open with them. But then I hope, hope, hope that I'm also really instilling the confidence that the product that we are now representing and that we are selling that uh, we hope they're using is the very best that's out there. Absolutely. So. We're an R&D company. We and are. Our, Boy, that's the truth. Yeah. Her, her face. There's a little bit of pain in that. No, well, there's pain in my chemist face <laughs> when they say, when I go, uh uh, not going to work. Not going to work. Um, yeah, but Dr. Fisher has instilled this in our corporate culture that we yes. don't release something until it's right. And even after we think it's right, don't be surprised if he finds something that could be just a little bit better. Absolutely. And that, that is so true. And that's, that's so just true. how it goes around yes. here. So, so um, the product that we have ended up with now in Amelast is well tested. It's got years of research behind it. It's got um, brilliant chemistry minds working on it and, it and brilliant clinical minds working on it as well. And uh, this product is one that you'd be really happy with. But no matter which varnish you're using, those tips that Carol shared with you about varnish placement will help you make sure that that placement is the most efficient that it can be. And this year I'm really trying to drive home um, so often, and I know it's so hard for so many offices to do, and that's driving home, educating your patients on the importance of, of adults getting fluoride treatments, and sealants for that matter, but especially fluoride treatments. It's one of those things that it so often is insurance dependent, mm -hmm. but um, I was looking at, you can see this last slide I have here and then I'll leave you alone. <laughs> um, uh, the slide I have that's put out by the uh, Pew uh, Charitable Trust Organization, they do studies, they do research on everything, uh, teen pregnancy, smoking, um, you know, gun violence, you know, I, everything we want to hear about and don't want to hear about. And they have an incredible uh, uh, amount of research that they have done on, on dental and dental needs within the United States. And uh, this map that I'm, that I'm showing on this last slide here looks at uh, community water fluoridation, the top 10 and bottom 10. Uh, I hope your state's in the top 10. But um, the, the uh, map basically shows the percentage of residents served by public water systems in each state. And, you know, take a look at that. You know, kind of get on there and dig around. It's a fun site, actually. You learn a lot. 
and find out what's going on in your community or find out what's going on you know, in your state. And that is something you need to educate your, your patients about, especially your adult patients, because that's going to make a difference in their dental health in you know, how well you know, they're going to be able to maintain their mouths, their dental health. So, you know, and see if you're questioning, for example, the fluoride, if you live in some little tiny, I used to live in Oakley, Utah, and uh, I learned by going to the uh, CDC website that uh, we had next to nothing in our, in our uh, fluoride, in our natural water up there. And uh, put together a program for the schools there, and they've seen a difference. They verbally say, at least as far as the, the one dentist that's there, as well as <laughs> parents, that they do see a difference in the dental health of their children. So it's something to think about, and um, but do talk to your adults as well. Educate them as to what's going on, and you know, find out what their expectations are. If insurance doesn't pay for it, then you know they, they need to understand just how important it is. So, thank you so much, Carol. Oh, you're so welcome. And thanks to all of you for tuning in live with us today. If you have any questions for Carol after this broadcast is over, if you're not joining us live, feel free to still comment below, and I will get those questions to Carol. She just works right down the stairs from me, and <laughs> I'm um, the bum in the basement. <laughs> If I'm in the basement with the view of the <laughs> valley, like great, okay. great view from her office. Um, so get me those questions and I'll take them down to Carol and we'll make sure that we get back to you soon. And thank you again you thank for you. joining us and thank you for joining time. us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.